Hello and welcome to my craft room with Shroda. Today we're going to do part two of the Greek Key Envelope Journal. And I did look up envelope journals online and the ones that were shown are a different shape and they're constructed a whole different way. So I think I'm bringing you something new. I would like to say that. I'm just not 100% positive. So what we did yesterday, um, or <laughs> yesterday for me, it may be a couple days back for you. Uh, we constructed it from the very beginning using these large envelopes, which are um, nine and a half by four. And they were from a clearance business pack. It had, you know, the stickers for your address labels and stuff like that in there. And they're really nice. They got like a little grid pattern on them. But I wasn't using them for anything. I think anytime you get a bill anymore, it's like, you know, already got an envelope in it. <laughs> and that's what you only get anymore. So anyhow, thank you. Thank you for coming to visit and seeing the next step of this process. And I I figured it out. You know, yeah, the, the last video was sort of like a hot mess. <laughs> so what we ended up doing is I was telling you how to get in there and kind of gauge where to put you know your next uh, envelope the very first ones at the beginning I mean this is I don't know how many envelopes I've got but I'm using them all uh, I want a nice little journal so anyhow it's it started here and it's just you just glued it down to the flap going right up to the crease for the first four <clears throat> then after that, you had to start building out a little further on the flap for the girth, you know, as it built and got bigger. Then we started having to do a little bit of a gusset. See how I've got like uh, two score lines in there? And <clears throat> that's the part that I was having trouble with, telling you how to gauge it from one to the next. Now you'll also see where I've gotten in here, and I've put a long piece um similar to this. I just had a bunch of scraps or I took some pages that I wasn't going to use for anything else and cut down. But what it is, is I I tucked them down into there. It wasn't quite this big. And then I went just over the envelope flap. Because this part on the next one and the previous on the back, those are going to be covered with another page. So you don't have to worry about that. And then on the back side, you just wanted to cover that one place where it was going to show through once you put your two panels on here. Now, I did think, you know, if, if somebody was to do all tea-dyed envelopes or coffee-dyed, and then they use, like, uh, tea-dyed pages to do the, and, you know, that would be really nice. I mean, it would be a pretty one, and it, it would be all kind of grungy looking. I thought that would be kind of a cool process there. So, what I was going to do is show you the way you could get in here and and know where to go for your next crease, your next uh, strip, your next envelope, that kind of thing. The easiest way I came about it was, see how it's laying down here? That's where I could, I put two strips down. Well, I need to put another one on the back back here. <clears throat> and... Um, you just have to make sure it's it's long enough to take care of the uh, position it's going to be in. You know, it's got it's got to be at least be be able to be glued to the edge of it. Oh, this is going to be another hot mess. I can see it. Any, <laughs> anyhow, so then what I did, <clears throat> where I knew I wanted my crease, is I got in here and I did a little pencil thingy there, and then I knew the width of this one was that. So I knew I needed to go out at least a quarter of an inch, I'd say, to get that crease there. You could actually go up this way and do it. So you knew you were big enough uh, once you scored that. <clears throat> you want to put these papers down first. That was the thing. You want to put the front one here and the back one down first before you go to score. Because that saves you so many steps and, and headaches. Uh, so, um, let me get my back piece on here. And then we'll put, we'll put, um, 
our next envelope on and you can see that I'll do a couple and then I'll probably just go off screen and uh, I'll go ahead and just do it myself I'm on, I want you to see how to do it and then I'll not put you through any <laughs> painful <laughs> painful watching you know and then what we're going to do is just going to smear some up this in the middle and use some wet glue for the outside this is just a glue stick i don't know if it, it's a good glue stick it's elmer uh, yeah craft bond but it gets it on there and gets it stuck now it doesn't always stick to the edge so that's where i'm coming back over you can use a wet glue you can use fabric tack a lot of people use these other glues um they can get I'm going to have trouble. I probably need to fill this poor little guy. He's getting close to the point where he's going to refuse to work on me. All right. Get out. There we go. So, I would tell you to rely only on glue stick, but, you know, unless you got a really good one, I don't know if it would make much difference you're just going to have to go back over it again as you probably saw in the other video i did i don't think you have to worry about direction on these not exactly because you're going to go back over it the only part it's going to show is that little bit that's in the spine that is going to be visible and then go over oh i just did one of those oh well like i said it's not going to really matter I think your your focal will be your panels that you put on there. There we go. And now, the part that I was describing, <laughs> get everything out of the way, um, will be this. You're going to get in here and roll this over to where you know it's going to be next. You're going to get in here and you're going to put your your mark how many lights i got on up there <laughs> now you're going to be putting panels in here and possibly pockets and side tucks and everything so if you wanted to go out a little further to give it you know room for that you go right ahead now i got my first line right there right past where this is situated then i'm going to roll it up and i'm going to go in there again and I'm going to give it a little bit of extra. Now, that's my two lines for my score. Oh, I was sitting and thinking and thinking. I'm like, oh, my God, i got to make this easier for these poor people. They're going to think I went, went and hit the moonshining cabinet or something. <laughs> and I didn't know what I was doing. But I love an assembly line method. Which is an easy, it's it's in sewing. And it's like, you're doing a quilt. And you have a process where you just keep, you don't have to keep cutting the thread. You just keep going and going and going. And uh, that's, that's about what I wanted to hear. I wanted it to be something that was just over and over and over again. It's the same thing, over and over. <laughs> okay, now, we're this... I suggest going in here and folding first. That's what I, what I didn't do before. Now, if you had a little trouble folding, hit your ruler to it. Put the, the edge of your ruler on there and then roll it up. And hit it real hard there at the bottom, right where it's kissing the ruler. And go up to your next one and do the same thing. That's how I usually do it. Because you get in here and do some of these gussets and some of these, you know, like a, I guess, you, what is it I've got? I think it's Traveler's Notebook I'll do, or um, it's a couple other little folio kind of journals I've done that you really have to get in there and fold it. Now see, it's nice and folded now, and I know exactly where I need to go with the next envelope, right there, right where that second score line is. So, I'm going to glue it on here because I know exactly where I need to go with the glue. And I'm going to just go in... Smear it on. Now, if you had score tape and wanted to go in that route, you could try it. Um, I don't know. I, I think wet glue is your best bet. You know it's going to be solid, you know. 
I've had times when score tape comes up, unless you give it a kiss of glue also. So, <clears throat> it's a process of experimentation. You just have to experiment with, you know, the str it's going to have stress on it. Um, you're going to be folding it. You're going to be getting in the pockets. It's, it's all kinds of things. And I think I explained yesterday, these pockets here, um, they're going to get covered. I mean, there might be where you might want to just go and have like a little kind of a half moon shape here and, you know, get away from this altogether. So there's all kinds of things. You could do like a little square. Um, you could just go straight down and just have that one little crack open. So it's all kinds of things you can do. And if that's the case, where you might put a piece over top of here it, like that completely, you don't have to worry about all that excess paper. I mean, you just have to go under that little bit of the flap that you're going to plan to do. Gosh, I should I should have thought of that. <laughs> so, I don't particularly um, want to go around each one of those little loopy things. Now, see, we're just going to keep building and building. And I gave myself a little bit of extra there because I know there's going to be paper on here as well. But now we want to go up to our next one. And we're going to put in another piece. That's the same piece. <laughs> I'm trying to variegate it a little bit. All right, this piece. Now we'll cut that off and get that in there. I thought, yeah, if you got any extra envelopes and you're, you don't, I mean, it doesn't have to be this shape either. If you got another shape, I wanted to use those little five by seven size, but I didn't have enough. All right, about like that. Okay. And I've, I found like the best way uh, is to throw you some glue stick on there. Just for the part that's going down in the pocket. About like that. Then you tuck that in. Okay, get in there. I know I need to be about up right at the edge of the flap because of the last one I had. That's about where I need to be. Yep, about right there. So I'm pushing that part down burnish it a little bit if you prefer now it's in there good and see where I'm right at the tip of my flap I'm going to keep going out as I go because I've got quite a few more but this is the part where you'll just come in and glue your flap part get down in there as far as you can and uh, just keep going around the edge and filling in all your body in there it's a little fiddly <laughs> what what isn't in crafting i have i've had people say i don't know how you can stand to just do that i like i love i love mysteries i love puzzles i love figuring things out that's why i do genealogy <laughs> i'm always trying to put and piece things together okay our next step will be our back and what we just want to be able to go up to that line so whatever piece and part you got i've got a little bit of a green let's go with that because it's going to only need to be as big as this panel back here see where that panel goes it just needs to overlap that and go to the other part so whatever piece you've got that fits that i dug in my scrap bin over there <laughs> <laughs> had all kinds of stuff. All right, come out, glue. I've been wanting to try the, the art glitter glue. I see that stuff come out like a volcano. <laughs> but this stuff is stingy. <laughs> it doesn't come out very, very much at all. Okay, I don't think it matters direction-wise on which way I'm going with this. So I'm just going down with it. I think I only need yay much. And I can trim off the rest. 
Oh. I hope everybody has a nice uh, bunch of weather hitting them today. We got cold. It's like in the 30s out there. Ooh. I am tired of this wishy-washy weather. Especially when we're getting ready to go over to West Virginia. I want something nice. I had to buy me some galoshes at the store the other day. More than likely, I'm going to wade through a creek somewhere. And I'm not about to have a leaky, leaky shoe. <laughs> we did that one time. Oh my gosh. I went <laughs> and went right down into a deep section. It went right over my insulated boot. Right down into it. Oh. Man, that was cold. It was cold. <laughs> and we were we were wading through the creek to get to a waterfall. It just happened to be, you know, it snowed. There's icicles everywhere. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's freezing. <laughs> but it's beautiful. <laughs> now, I'm getting ready to run out of room here. Can you see? I don't have that much room for any uh, edge of a envelope, so... My next piece is going to have to be a whole lot longer, probably out another half inch from here, just so I have enough coverage. Okay, now I've got that, and then I'm going to go up and grab it right there. All right, and then I'm going to get the school board. It's just, it's just that. It's just repetitive. You've are, you're covering your front and your back at the same shot, so... <laughs> Oh, I pulled that a little bit, but that's okay. You don't have to worry about this. You're going to cover it with a paper anyway. Um, so you're going to have that taken care of. And let me score here. And I'll put the next envelope down after you see me do this part. And then I'm going to put you on pause so you don't have to, you know, think you're watching paint dry <laughs> and then I'm going to put it all together and we'll get back with each other so the next step is just to crease it use my ruler Oop, wrong side <clears throat> all of my pieces of equipment have fallen by the wayside of fingernail polish remover. Uh, I use fingernail polish remover on here and erase the numbers. I did it on my mat here where I got a sm <laughs> smeary yellow. I forget what else. Oh, oh, my little cutting uh, mat. I've got a little cutting mat I've used several times. I used it on there and <laughs> erased some of those numbers. I'm lethal with that stuff. Well, now everybody says to use hand sanitizer, so I've tried to go that route. It doesn't take off any numbers I might need in a future life. Oh, okay. Now where we're hit at here, this is where you go in again with your with your glue and cover your edge that's sticking out here after that last crease. Uh, yep, Zach has us all lined up. He had, um, what was it? He had somebody else. Every time I turn around, there's another cemetery. <laughs> Ones we've missed. So I think he had somebody else telling us about another cemetery we had to go check out. We only have eight days over there. I don't know how we're going to get it done. We're always exhausted when we get back. Well, if you, if you see anything on my... YouTube channel here that isn't craft <laughs> craft related it's because it wouldn't fit on our cemetery page so I had to post it to my YouTube and then share it over that's how it usually works that's why there's a few things on here that's uh, <laughs> from over there <laughs> that's over in uh, Mingo County West Virginia it's right next to Kentucky way over there all right, so we're up to this point. I'm going to just keep going. It would just continuously keep building and building. The gussets will get bigger and bigger until I've got them all on here, and I'll be back. Okay, I'm to the point where I am done adding <laughs> envelopes. I've added 17. Actually, it'll be 18 with this one. 
Uh, so what has happened is, like I had said before in the other video, you were going to have a, a nicely wider uh, piece on the front because of having all the gussets in here. So what happened, though, is when I folded that back to make it the width that it should be, uh, it kind of went down at the, the corners again, like that little wedge shape got in there. So I thought, well, what if I was to add an extra envelope that will be a little flap out, or a flip out, <laughs> not a flap out. <laughs> but I was going to add the, um, the piece in there, match it up with the front one, to where I have a squared off edge now. It's going to be covered with my cover of uh, uh, motif or whatever you want to call it, but it will be square. Plus, another idea I had was to strengthen the front because it's the front cover and everything. I had this piece that I had printed wrong when I did my tarot card. I went wanted to print that on the back or on another piece of paper and it printed it right over here. So I cut that to be the size of the inside of my envelope. Um, it's a little less, but that's okay. It, it'll be in there, and it'll be strengthening it. So, I don't even know if I need to glue it in here. Let me stick it in and see what it looks like. And, come on. I was having a little trouble before getting one piece in there. I guess with two, it made it nice and snug, which is actually what we want. Okay, there. All right. Oh. I'm not sure what it's hitting in there, but I think that's about where we want it to be. So, I'll just tug this one back out to match that corner that I'm wanting to create. There. That'll work for me. Now, what we're going to do is stick a little bit of glue on the back side here just to hold it steady. Hold it in place. And... If we can, get in between. Come on, work with me. Put a little bit inside of here, too. So that holds those two together. I should have done that before I even put it in here, but... You know me. Rush, rush ahead, Rhoda. <laughs> rush ahead, Rhoda. That's a good one for me. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, I try to think these things out. Usually my previous um, videos and stuff, you know, I'm just, uh, I gotta get it all just right before I get on the film. Well, this one I didn't. I just, I'm winging it. And I hope I'm not boring you. <laughs> I try not to anyway. All right, we're putting that one down because it's not going to be on our way in any way, shape, or form. Okay, that one's down. Now, for this one, this is where I'm going to put this flap in here, and it will hide all that uh, part with the cardstock pieces. It may have a little bit of glue showing, so what did I do with that? Okay. I had this little extra piece. We're going to glue... This to the front of that, just so we don't have any uglies. Because we needed to do something for the inside of this one like we've done for all those other ones, right? Right. Alright. Get it open. Get it open. Oh, God. Get it open before the glue dries. <laughs> I think it's the right size. Bite my tongue. It better be the right size. <laughs> There. We're good. Now let's put that down. I'll trim my edge and it's ready to be put in there. I really appreciate everybody putting up with me. Do I need to do it like that? Because it's going to be... Nope, I don't need to trim it like that. I'm sorry. It should be trimmed just straight up and down. Uh, yeah. I appreciate you putting up with my stumbling around. And the next video will only be the flip through. <laughs> I'm not going to put you through any more of this because 
the decorating part, I'm always twiddly, twiddly with it, you know, and uh, it's just going to be putting panels of paper on here, basically. And where I think it needs an, an extra pocket or a tuck or something to take up the slack where I may have made the gussets a little too big, then that's exactly where you would want to put a pocket or something to take up that extra space. Or a thicker piece of paper would even work. So it's, it's kind of like however you would like to build it. Once you get this basic structure made that's about what it's going to end up being all right so here we go in here like this i'm going to ooh, meet up with that corner up here where's my fold nope my fold over needs to be a little further in which it's going to be right there at the edge okay Right there at the corner corner. Oh. You know. I didn't have to make it so difficult for you, did I? Okay, yeah. What we're matching up is this corner to that edge of the envelope. Yep, I think it's right on that one. And then I'm just going to make sure it's kind of like right on the money. It needs to go out a little bit. Add a little bit. Hmm. Add a little bit. <laughs> if it dries on you, you can always get up in behind there and, and re-glue it. <laughs> but I think I think she's on there. I need to make sure that piece is down in there correctly. And this one too. All right. Now, my only thing to point out. Let me let me get the fold in there so you can see it correctly. The only thing I need to point out is, now see it's nice and square, and it will be, <laughs> is I chose this, I've had this for ages. You're supposed to put a ribbon through it. And see how ratty it is? <laughs> I kind of like that. It's supposed to be sewn on a piece of, you know, shirt, I don't know what. So we're using this. I'm not even going to put a ribbon in it. But before you put your panels on, you choose what kind of um, closure you're wanting for this thing. I'm probably going to go with a bunch of stamps and stuff like that, but it's going to be vintage too. Um, so you're going to want to give yourself enough there to tie you a bow, which I probably need a whole lot more. But then you're going to place this down with some fabric tack before anything else happens. And just glue it up to here and then around the spine and up to there and then you just put your panels over top of it and your ribbons in there plus if you would like to before or after you put this on you can put you a pretty little lace well actually you'd want to do it after you got your panels on put you a pretty little lace edge on the the, the spine that would be really attractive okay <laughs> I'm not going to put you through more of this. All right. Thank you. Thank you, all my subscribers, watchers, and lurkers. Um, I so appreciate you putting up with me and seeing a new item, a new, the birth of a new uh, creation. <laughs> and come back to see the flip through, hopefully, in the next week. <laughs> I'll be working on it until I go on my trip. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.